The second best case is the tax-free car permit case. There is no law in this country to permit the members of the legislature and the executive to abuse their office and to rob the government revenue. In 1978, the constitution came into being. Then President J.R. Jayavardhana, he was a very shrewd architect and he opened up the floodgates for the fraudsters and uh, he made the legislature a kind of a group of criminals and he opened up the floodgate for corruption and he abused the, the legislative, legislative power to grant tax-free car permits. There is no provision, there is no law whatsoever in this country that permits the lawmakers to import cars tax-free. There is a provision in the Customs Law Section 19A, as well as in the Excise Special Provision Law, to grant tax exemption for export-oriented industries. That provision is there to promote exports. However, J.R. Javadhan abused that uh, power to permit the lawmakers to import cars for themselves tax-free, which is a direct violation of the rule of law. Uh, he, in fact, compelled even the opposition MPs, including Janata Vimukti Peramana, JVP, to abuse the system for unjust enrichment. So everybody abused the system and imported vehicle tax-free. And finally, when all these things happened after this went on for a long, long period of time, and when this system, when this abuse of public funds was challenged in the Supreme Court, it is very unfortunate. The Supreme Court let down the people. It was presented to the Supreme Court with adequate evidence, ample evidence, overwhelming evidence how these people abused this system. Who imported the vehicles and who registered the vehicle, the amount of tax free revenue robbed. All, the total amount robbed was about 7 billion. Each MP robbed 33 and a half million rupees. All these people, when they were charged before the Corruption Commission, Corruption Commission failed to uphold the rule of law because they, once there's a credible in, uh, I mean, complaint made with a plausible uh, uh, a case is presented to them, they are under duty to inquire into it and charge the accused before for corruption. When the authority failed, that means the commission to investigate bribery and corruption, when they fail to perform their duty as required by law, the citizens are entitled to challenge them before the Supreme Court under Section 24 of the Corruption Law, Bribery and Corruption. This case was brought up before the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court judges, I can't believe it, including the Chief Justice, at one stage, they refused to take up this matter. One by one, six judges, for citing personal reasons, they stepped out and they withdrew from the hearing. Finally, after about two years, after initiating this action, the Supreme Court held, the Attorney General in this country, the Republic of Sri Lanka, submitted to the court that the Corruption Commission Whereas the due process is to summon the complainant, virtual complainant, that was me. I who initiated this case in the public interest. They, they are under duty to summon me and record my evidence and then to initiate action. No, not even a statement recorded from the virtual complainant. The Attorney General submitted to court that they have conducted a credible, I mean, independent inquiry and found nothing wrong. There's no process, there's no evidence to charge the MPs and the cabinet of ministers for corruption, which is not the case. It's just an absolutely false and unfounded statement. So the judges finally, and uh, they ruled, since the Corruption Commission has found, that since the Attorney General made a submission that they, are, they have conducted a credible investigation and found nothing wrong, judges refused to discharge their duty as required by law. They allowed all these chiefs, these corrupt politicians to rob the public funds. And now that is the very reason. <clears throat> the legislature and the executive behave in this manner. They know that the judiciary in this country is incapable of discharging their duty and to protect the judicial power of the people as required by law. So finally, entire nation suffered because of the failure on the part of the judiciary.